Hello, ladies and gentlemen, you're now watching and listening to Championship on the Line podcast here. And today we got a very special guest for our Lucha Talk episode. It's an honor to have these two guys in there. They're killing it right now in Championships in Hollywood. They're the hottest thing in there in Hollywood. The guy to my left, he is the succulent one. He is Candy Land from Candy Land, Mr. Candy himself, the everlasting Richie Slade. And What's also, up, we got the big hunk, Flex McCallan, ladies and gentlemen. They are beef. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I'm so nervous. Come on, Candy. man. Come on. All right. No, we, we tried yeah, again. Yeah. Try it again. So, so, so. so. <laughs> I feel like you guys got potential, but one, come on. Let's, get, let's try it again. Uh, one, two, three. Beef. Andy, there we go. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was better. It was better. Yeah, yeah. Better. The yeah. pressure was I, on us. The pressure was on us. Two out, of, two out of ten, but that's good enough because nobody's gonna <laughs> hit <laughs> it. You passed, you passed, but yeah, uh, yeah. very low. <laughs> For a minute, I thought you guys were gonna interrupt me and then do you guys' own introduction. Like you, guys oh, doing... you mean you mean you mean like this? Woo! <laughs> Andy, oh, <laughs> that was <yeah>. awesome. <laughs> awesome awesome but once again guys thank you so much for joining with us honor to have you guys on really appreciate you guys taking the time to be with us got it awesome so uh real quick you know we're gonna start the show uh off you know just for the fans to get to know you guys a little bit better um we're gonna ask some real quick quick fun questions for you guys is that cool we do it for you guys yeah yeah let's do it all right cool so for both of you what is your guys' favorite movie of all time? I don't know. That's a good one. Yeah, that's that's uh let's go first, man. Oh man. Uh you know, classic wise, it, it, it'll probably shock you, but uh growing up, it was it was definitely the nightmare before Christmas. And I don't want to sound okay. too hot topic right now. Uh, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed I just enjoyed the entire story of it, and I like Tim Burton's work. Um, it's one of those movies that you feel like they they opened the door for many sequels that it could have been, but they kept mm-hmm. it closed because they didn't want to destroy the original. Which yeah. I mean, I you know I appreciate that. In the same same case, there was a lot of routes they could go, and they left it like open ended. Um, but it's just it's just an OG, yeah. And I know it's it movies aren't made like that anymore, and that's a big thing with the stop motion everything cgi so it's, it's a lot easier for them so back mm-hmm. in that day if you bumped the table and something got moved that was like an additional 260 days you needed to work on that film so i honor that that like hard work and dedication that they did mm-hmm. with that so i'll say nightmare before christmas right on awesome what about for you I, richie man i got so many uh, i don't i don't know if i could pick one but i guess if i just had to like you can name know. them all if you want name some of your favorites Oh man, uh, I like Jacob's Ladder, RoboCop, The Crow. I like the uh, the first X Men movie. Uh, man, you, you got me on the spot here. There's way too many. I, I love the original Tron, um, Escape from New York. Uh, what else is there? Man, uh, yeah, I just I, on the same sense of what uh, Flex was saying about remakes and stuff like that. RoboCop is like one of my top favorites, and of course the original mm-hmm. is the best. And they try to do they tried to do exactly that is remake it and they even made sequels and they just butchered it. So he's right about that. Not the meets originals. Oh, absolutely. Totally agree with you guys. I got um, high five to Tron too. I'm a, I'm a Tron fan. So. Ooh. Ooh nice. Yeah. Awesome. And then with the next question, do you guys have like a favorite music artist or a band you guys like to listen to? Richie, you go first on this one. Uh, me, I get, I get that. Actually, this is like a, uh, people ask me this all the time. And it's one of those things where it's like, I, I like all sorts of genre of music. Um, though I admit I'm not up to date with the modern stuff. I'm kind of stuck right now, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's age hit me or something, but, um, anything from the nineties, anything from the eighties, I'm a big eighties, you know, I love eighties rock, eighties alternative 80s, even hip hop and, and 90s, you know, everything going into the 90s as well. Like, uh, it's too, you know what? I even like the boy bands. 
back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like, they hated it during that time, of course. But then now I'm <laughs> back. I'm like, hey, this stuff yeah. is deep. Yeah, you can get away with like, it. That's yeah, it. I'm like, <laughs> like this. This is cool. <laughs> Your turn, awesome. Flex. Awesome. What about okay. you, Flex? So, so I'll, I'll be more, uh, more sticking to one or two bands. I would say, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like Richie. I like a, a variety of stuff. And then uh, the modern day stuff. I listen to a lot of like Parov Stellar, so it's like the big band type, uh, big band yeah. type trans music. Um, but if we had to go back to the 90s, I would say Nine Inch Nails and uh, the Smashing Pumpkins were probably oh, my man. biggest. Ooh, nice. This isn't, this isn't to try to get a job at NWA either, but Billy Corbin, <laughs> were, um, I was always a huge fan of the Smashing Pumpkins, almost every single song they released. Yeah, I always too. could dig, even like the, the filler songs on the old CDs um, were, were good, were good music. Uh, so I would say definitely Nine Inch Nails. I don't think they ever put out a bad song. And then the same with the Smash of Pumpkins. Mm-hmm. I agree. And with those two bands you just named right now, Flex, what's your favorite song from both of them? You know, from, from Nine Inch Nails, I, I, I'd probably say We're Together is, uh, We're In This Together is probably my top favorite and then when they put that with the original uh avengers trailer that was pretty dope because it, mm. it fit the mood mm-hmm. for that when the, the avengers was coming out and then um with smashing pumpkins man they, they, they have a bunch of them but i like when they they came back uh about like 2000 i think eight or seven and they re- they released tarantula tarantula was a good one i think they used it for like a wwe pay-per-view back in the day um it just is a good like fast paced uh, Smash It Punk. And some of them are, you know, like drawn out or, or more like uh, love related, but still, you know, alternative well, rock. A classic uh, one. I think it was a famous one back in the day. Uh, it's like 19, it's called 19 something, I think. I, I oh, felt dumb. yeah, yeah. Or I remember it with a butterfly, too. That's another one. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 19, I think it's yeah, 65 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think it's something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that was- yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And then with the next question, what is your guys' favorite TV show? Flex, you go ahead. Uh, need- you know, I was a huge fan of The Walking Dead until it kind of spun around. Um, I followed that one through and through up till this, this past season. I, I kind of fell off. They started killing off all the main characters. Um, I think it was, it was very well done. But uh, favorite of all time? would have to be uh man it's hard to put on it like I, i've seen every seinfeld and i feel like every friends episode they were good shows but uh man pretty rough picking one particular <laughs> i guess i guess i just stick to the walking dead for more modern day type uh okay. Yeah, just just let's say The Walking Dead up until season what was that nine I think it was, and then it kind of just spun off. But I was able to to hold on to it through season nine. I mean, there was there was a time. So I'll tell you a quick story on why it's Walking Dead. So that that really big season that they had where they they, they left everybody in awe with Negan when they introduced Negan and they had mm-hmm. everybody get on their knees. And this is no spoilers anymore because this was like six years ago. So. <laughs> When everybody got on their knees and they left it where someone was going to get their head bashed in by Lucille, they left it as the cliffhanger. And what they did was they re- they recorded a death scene for every character that was on their knees at that time, just in case it leaked. Well, days before the, the season kicked off, I bumped into Michael Cudlitz out mm. on uh, Ventura Boulevard over in uh, Sherman Oaks. And he played Abraham, the orange haired one. And uh, he... He literally, I knew, I felt like he was going to be the one that died. And I bumped into him like three days before the season premiere kicked off. Oh, wow. uh, He was just sitting at a bar outside. I took a picture with him. I still have the picture. And uh, I said to him, hey, man, hopefully it's not you that dies. And he he just looked at me, winked, (laughs) and said, I hope not either. And I knew at that moment, (laughs) even though he signed a non-disclosure, I knew he was the one that was going to get killed. And we were taping Hollywood during that time. So that Sunday, I rode with Scorpio Sky and Eric Watts. And I rode with them to the show. So I'm, I'm like two hours away from my home in OC. 
and I'm telling them guys, hey, we can't get food today. We we got to go straight back to your place. I got to get driving back home. I can't get this spoiled. And they're like, yeah, no problem. Just calm down, bro. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so we get to the tapings, and right away, Sky's like, hey, let's get food afterwards. And I'm like, yo, hold on, wait a minute. I, I rode with you guys. I said, I need to get to my car. And he's like, it's just a quick bite. So we go, and we go out with the other guys, man, and we're getting food. And, like, I'm sitting there, like, twiddling my thumbs, not opening my phone. I can't see one spoiler. And I'm like, Scott, can we get going? Scott, can we go? And Scott's like, dude, you're pissing me off, bro. He's like, I'm like I know, man, but I, I thought we agreed. So I finally get back, and then I, I get in my car. I get back to his house. I get in my car. I drive back. And then the, the opening scene is literally Abraham getting his head smashed in. And I was like, damn it, bro. I knew it. So... Oh my god. That's gosh. my story. Like, oh, that's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good story. While I'm over here uh having to share my love to my cat. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, Richie, what would be your favorite TV show? Well, damn, I should have thought about it a little bit more. Um, you know, <laughs> you know what? Recently I've actually found a couple of good ones. Of course, classics would have been like X Files back in the day. I used to love that show. Um uh what else was there I, I think there's i don't know if this would count but like i used to be a huge fanatic of unsolved mysteries uh like mm-hmm. this series so i used to be like i used to watch every episode i still watch replays and repeats of it just i guess nostalgia but um recently though i found a lot of good stuff um you know a lot of good um programs that i actually just binged on uh finished up recently like there's one on hbo i'm trying to remember what the name of it something about wolves um i forgot the title it's something like raised raised by wolves or something like that and it's kind of mm-hmm. like the sci-fi um oh benny get out of here <laughs> she's flipping out she didn't she like that uh she didn't like that show apparently but yeah um <laughs> raised by wolves i think that's what it was called there's like one season but hopefully there's a second one but it was really good I don't know. I like weird stuff like that. You know, um, I'm into uh, there's, uh, you know, like they, they have uh, on Netflix, uh, Daredevil. I think they did a couple of like two or three seasons. Mm-hmm. That. that was mm-hmm. really good. Uh, the Punisher. They did one season, I think. I don't know. I think it was one season, but that was really good. Uh, yeah. And I did like the uh, the Walking Dead as well, but I lost track of everything after the fourth season. I just could not keep up. So, yeah, got left behind. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Great answers. And uh, with the next question, what would be, do you guys have any hobbies outside of uh, wrestling that you guys like to do? Well, you know what? Uh, uh, I'll, 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 let Richie, I'll let Richie think on this one and uh, yeah, give him a breather because he just finished. Uh, <laughs> so um, I just wanted to cut in. That's all it was. Um, so <laughs> I would say definitely uh, fitness is a big thing for me. Um, in case you didn't know, I, you know, it might not be evident. He uh, just needs- Guys, that's it. Yeah, it's just I just eat candy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so fitness is a big thing. I've been doing that for 17 years now, consecutively. So I uh, started when I was what was I? 15, and then uh, I'm, I'm 33 now. So um, yeah, consecutively 17 years. I, I competed like 12 years ago um, in men's physique. I haven't. I don't want to do that. I feel like you're over it and like, it's not that much of a thing that you want to do anymore. Um, good thing. Wrestling's not that way. Uh, so, um, uh, there's that. And then also I'm a huge, I'm a huge, I, I like to say closet gamer, but I, I, I'm a huge, uh, gamer. I love Nintendo. So I grew up in the, my Nintendo was almost like my little brother. Cause like I was born in 87, the NES came out in America in 87, um, so by the time I was like four, I had an NES. I was playing the original classics, Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, all the NES games, um, Legend of Zelda. And then I got an SNES originally when it launched in 91. And then it was kind of like the motto as soon as like uh, a console dropped. I don't want to say I was a spoiled little brat, but I mean, I was lucky enough to get those consoles, the N64 in 96, um, GameCube launched in 90 or er, 2001. And then, um, I eventually had a little sister, so I didn't need that sibling um, video game counterpart, but I still stuck with it. So even to today, I have a Nintendo Switch. Uh, I've worked with Nintendo a lot um, throughout the past, like, five, six years. I used to work uh, when trade shows were a thing, E3 and um, mm-hmm. Comic-Con. I would always work with Nintendo uh, doing their events, so I, w- I would run a lot of the booths. I ran uh, 
Luigi's Mansion, the mansion pop-up for Luigi's Mansion 3 two years ago in 2019 when that dropped for the Switch uh, back in October of 19. So, uh, yeah, definitely huge Nintendo gamer. And then um, probably just I'm an OCD clean freak, too. So I like to make sure everything's in its place. <laughs> Other than that, I don't do much else. Uh, but, yeah, so that's, wow. that's a little bit of, of the inside of me. Richie? Uh, well, where do I start? I, I'm, a, I, I like art, so I like long walks on the beach and, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a huge, like, I love art. So I want to do, um, like my entire life I've been drawing. I wanted to be an artist initially, and then I wanted to be an actor and I'm into that. I'm into cinematography. I like making movies, shorts and stuff like that. Um, I, and I'm a big lover of cats and animals. Uh, of course, as you saw here, um, this one in particular, her name is Penny. So she's, she's my current obsession at the moment. And, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, aside from that, yeah, I just, I, I, you know, whatever I can do, if I can get away with doing it myself, I'd rather, I'm more of a hands-on kind of guy. Like for example, the gear that you see behind me, all those I've actually made myself. I'm very oh, impatient. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I don't like waiting on, I don't like waiting on other people to make things when I could just pop them out, you know, within a matter of an hour or 30 minutes. I may not be the best at it, but I like to say I'm the jack of all trades, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I like, I like anything that anything creative that I could put my hands on, I can do and fix with my hands. I'd rather do it myself. Awesome. Awesome guys. This is really just stuff. And it's awesome. I knew like you were saying with art, you know, what got you into art? Um, it was, I was a comic book fanatic. I was into the X-Men and I collected the toys. I collected the cards and, and, um, watched all the cartoons of course and i was like hey you know i want to you know i guess going way back thinking about it i was actually originally into batman and mm -hmm. then I, I i think one of my first drawings was like batman and then started uh evolving from there of course into other characters and stuff like that and favorite characters like x-men like uh, wolverine and gambit and stuff like that you know kind of inspired me in fact i have a story it was like when i was 10 i was in canada at the time I lived out there. I basically lived everywhere in the U.S., but that's during that portion, that little bit of time I was out in uh, Canada. And uh, my mom had told me, you know, if you want to be an artist, like go ahead, like send it, send it, send your art out to Stan Lee. Maybe he might look at it and reply back to you. And a couple of months, which I did. A couple of months later, I ended up actually getting a rent letter from Stan Lee. Oh. Uh, signed by, he even has his little Excelsior at the end of it. And uh, I just wish I had, of course, kept it. It's been so many years. I lost it somewhere in storage. Oh. But um, he wrote me back and he said, oh, you know, when you become of age, uh, definitely check out our studios and come out and uh, show us, you know, what you're what you have. And uh, you're a talented guy and blah, blah, blah. And all the good stuff that you tell 10 year olds. So, yeah, that was it. Kind of cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Just like even getting a letter from him and saying that, that must have been like... <laughs> Yeah, like as a ten-year-old yeah. man, this has been like amazing. That was That's it. Awesome. My, I was like, oh, I got to do it. But you know, like now that I'm older, you know, like I have this bucket list of things that I want to do, and that's that's one of the things that I kind of motivate myself to keep doing. Is for example, like I don't, I feel like everybody's born with talent and a skill, whether they've discovered it or not. And the thing is, the mm -hmm. trick is to keep utilizing it and not letting it go to waste so even though i'm not a comic book artist as i wish to have been and all that stuff i'm still utilizing it some way or another i utilize mm -hmm. it in my gear um I, I still you know i draw up different designs and different things um you know my own my own graphics uh you know and occasionally people come at me and tell me hey you know they need a flyer done and you know use my artistic ability and creativeness in that as well but you know you'd be surprised it's in everything uh acting same thing it's involved in wrestling uh um and and just in wrestling in general you know that's another thing that i grew up watching and being obsessed with and you know it was like a motivation to myself to get in here and say hey i could do it i can put my you know whatever i put my mind to i can do it so i don't know this could be a message to anyone out there you know if you think about it and you think you're not the biggest guy in the ring look at beef candy <laughs> <laughs> And also, Flex, you know, I want to ask you, too, you know, you were saying you did muscle competitions. What made you want to get into that? And also, both of you guys are very, you guys are in great shape. What is you guys' secret? What's you guys' workout routine like? 
so so what what got me into working out was uh, along the lines of what Richie was saying with the I was a lifelong wrestling fan, probably started watching it at the age of like eight, nine. Um, mm-hmm. It was during the era of like Austin Rock, uh, like as it was prematurely starting the corporation. Um, the the number one and two top wrestlers that really pushed me to want to do it, which I'm glad they had such historic careers, were Edge and Christian. Uh, I was a huge mm-hmm. fan of the brood when it first started. It was mostly Christian. I could see something in him that just literally made me hungry to want to do the sport. And that's when they were using him very little. He was seldomly used. He was, I think, at FS light heavyweight champion, um, which was cool, but they just, they weren't even letting him talk. He just wasn't, um, you know, developing at the time, but you could see that the guy had such potential and uh, watching that error, the attitude error, I think, you know, it's one of those things where, man, if you got the chance to watch something as brilliant as the attitude error, you wanted to be a part of something like that if you had that yeah. entertainment um, heart in you. So definitely um, when I when I decided at the age of probably 12, 13 that I was going to do pro wrestling, um, I was literally the smallest kid in my school. I was just the, the, the scrawny little, you know, pipsqueak guy. And uh, I was like, man, like I'm looking at guys like Undertaker, Kane at that time, and I'm like, I don't know how I would hang with those if I ever had the chance to tangle with them. Um, so I, that's why I started working out at 15 at home. I bought some really small weights, five pound, 10 pound dumbbells, struggled with those, got stuck under some bars on the flat bench. It was embarrassing enough. But then I, uh, I joined a gym. Um, it was called extreme gym in, in Philadelphia. And man, like that gym motivated me. I worked out with, uh, NFL players from the Eagles. I worked out with, um, arena football league uh players from the philadelphia soul and um uh, these guys were huge and like they could see it in me at the age of like 17 through 20 that i was so hungry for this and they were like dude you're gonna get huge one day they're like if you stick with this you will literally get everything you want out of your body and then like looking at the guys at the time the inspirational figures um were eddie guerrero and and the other guy who shall not be named um mm, I, you know, I know. And, uh, you know, so those bodies at that time were something that I could, re- like, you know, relate to because of the height were about the same, but the thickness is what I needed to grow into. Um, so those two in particular I looked up to because they had broken barriers from their time in WCW through the run with the, you know, WWE. Uh, so I definitely used that as a marker for me to try to hit. And I feel like I've gotten pretty close if those guys were around today, I feel like I've gotten pretty close to their like limits of what they were. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm more than thankful for the opportunities I've been given in the wrestling and, um, it, with the, with the way I've been able to build my body and, and showcase it with the wrestling. So it all worked out, man. Honestly, it was, it was a long journey and it's still like, I just got done working out before this podcast right now, but it's an everyday thing. You grow into it and you learn to love it. It's a job you don't get paid for. Um, kind of like wrestling. No, but, uh, you know, it's a job you don't get paid for at all, so you just got to love it, and that's what it is, you know. So that's what keeps me going. Awesome, awesome. And it shows because you guys are in great shape, you know. Thank you. Oh, the, reason why you the reason why you guys call you Beef Candy for a reason. That's it. Well, I, I I didn't always look like this, you know. No, I, I you know what, I just this <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm like a late bloomer on everything. So when it came to like bodybuilding or even working out, I'm still a work in progress. I think everybody is at a certain point, but like I'm kind of like a beginner to the whole thing. So uh, I my entire life have just been a couch potato. So it's like I I like lounging about and doing absolutely nothing but drawing and, you know, being creative in those ways. I've never liked, you know, I never liked the idea of spending time in the gym. But, you know, it's it's something that you have to grind for if you want to look a particular way and you want to go um you know you want to be successful especially in wrestling i think uh yeah this is a new day and age where a lot of guys whether they're fit or not they're still able to do it whether it's charisma Mm -hmm. or other things to to kind of like you know uh uh, i guess make up for the lack of muscle which again me flex is a freaking beast me on the other hand compared to him i look at the (laughs) but um (laughs) Again, though, I, it's a work in progress. So every day you go in the gym, you're you're you have a goal in mind. Like 
he said like he looked up to people like um like eddie guerrero and yeah that guy i know that was one of the that was one of the motivations seeing the guy in the ring just how big you know even though mm-hmm. he's a small guy he looks so jack and so serious i'm like man that's what that's the level i gotta get and of course you know some of us have good genetics we could you know go to the gym after a while you know the muscles start to show and then some of us are slower than others so uh, it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of work i'm i'd say i'm at my happiest point right now especially ever since um uh, working with you know with flex you know having that motivation on the side uh learning a lot too i gotta say you know like i'm better than ever if there was ever a time in my wrestling career that i said i truly enjoy what i'm doing this is it now and i i mm-hmm. like flex even said like i am truly grateful for every opportunity i'm getting uh, getting you know and i'm living the dream right now no matter how small or big it might be it's it's a day-to-day thing you know Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, guys. And it, and it just shows hard work, you know, gets you to what you guys are doing now. So it's amazing, you know. And, uh, you know, I want to continue with these fun questions real quick. Um, but the next question, yeah, what are you guys' favorite foods? Do you guys have a favorite type of food or favorite meal or anything? I, I, could, uh, I could answer that real quick. Um, so I'm half Persian. My dad's from Iran. Uh, and my mom is a Southern girl, you know? Um, so, uh, I get the, I guess you could say the perfect mix because, you know, I, I, I love Southern food, but at the same time, I'm also, my favorite would be Persian food. Like, uh, mm. there's a dish called gourmet sabzi. It's really good. It looks like diarrhea on the plate, but <laughs> it's delicious. Man. I don't know. Right. If you've never had Persian food, you should try it. It's we, let's just say there's a uh, flex doesn't know this yet, but there's a special, uh, street on Candyland. It's around the corner. There's a Persian restaurant there. You guys got to check it out. Oh, is that is that where there's that hole? It's like taped off. I always wondered what that was. <laughs> man. It's so not weird. a hole in the wall, that's for sure. It's not it, a hole. It's in like the wall. it's like Looney Tunes, where it looks like a street, but it's not really. Yeah, it is a street, huh? That's so weird. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. Awesome. And what about you, Flex? You know what? I, I'm I'm pretty simple, man. Chicken and rice, as as a uh, as a uh, cliche as it sounds, uh, I'm a huge chicken guy. So like I can I can turn and, and I know this kills the gimmick right now. Uh, we're not chicken candy, but um, you know the white meat, man, it's so clean. And I'm not a I literally eat a ton of candy. That part of the gimmick is real. Um, but uh, the white meat just I, I feel like it helps with just bulking and it, it makes me content uh, red meat's a little harder to get down all the time um so i mean i do like fish and i do like sushi but i would say chicken is the go-to and then and the, the chicken preparation can be different um in multiple different ways i'm a big uh paprika user and um i like teriyaki chicken so i mean i know it's not extravagant and we don't need our own restaurant in Candyland for it you know but um <laughs> you can just go to the flame roller down the street in california but um you know like definitely chicken is my is my go-to grab if we're trying to be fancy though sushi i i've become mm. a sushi lover since i've moved to california from the yeah. east coast east coast not good on not big on sushi and the sushi not so good um but out in cali yeah like sushi all around but you got to find the good spots and when you do you, you, you go back oh yeah so. it's a- Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. And then with the next question, what would be you guys' favorite video game? Oh, Super Smash Brothers, hands down. Uh, that, <laughs> I live, I live and breathe Super Smash Brothers. Like anything to do with Smash Bros, I have. I have every single amiibo released from the Nintendo line of the amiibo little um, come to life figures. I have all the World of Nintendo figures that have been released from all the either Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing. I'm a huge collector of anything memorabilia-wise of Nintendo. So if it's like a limited release, um, you know, like a coin or like some kind of emblem, a star, I get that kind of stuff. Um, Malin stuff, uh, point systems, but definitely Smash Bros because it just puts everything, to get, everyone's hard work together in one game. It's like the <clears throat> ultimate art demonstration of all these different worlds coming together. And it makes sense. It, it, it's not jarbled up and it doesn't feel like it doesn't work. Like when they added Steve from Minecraft last October, 
when you first saw it, you're like, what? Minecraft in Smash Bros. And then when I played the character, I'm like, man, it's so seamless. Like, it works so good with mm-hmm. along the lines of characters like Snake from Metal Gear Solid, Bayonetta from the Bayonetta series, you know, Link from Zelda, and um, it, it just fits in. So, so if I can have all four of us right now say a prayer for the next character to get in, if we can say a prayer for Crash Bandicoot, because I've been praying for him to get in for years, and we have two characters left for DLC. We need Crash to be the next one. I think June will be the next release during the virtual E3, um, the reveal of the next character. We need it to be Crash. So I don't care if you guys have other preferences or don't care about the game. Subconsciously right now, pray for Crash. Okay, Crash. good. <laughs> we'll do. Awesome. And then with you, Richie? Um, you know what? I I like Super Smash Brothers, but I'm also uh, um I like Mortal Kombat. I like darker games like psychological mm-hmm. games of like horror. Um, huge fan of Silent Hill. Um, I'm hoping uh, they bring that one back. Uh, but yeah, uh, Resident Evil. Uh, of course, I played the most recent one. Just beat it the other day. Uh, good game. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 more in the the horror. Um, I don't know kind of like twist it in a way but um yeah, yeah those are those are it pretty much awesome awesome and then with the next question do you guys have like any rituals you guys do before you do before your match and you guys do before you hit that curtain oh boy well of what we can talk about yeah i i, I don't know uh <laughs> yeah we we definitely hit the bands we hit the, we hit the stretchy bands let's yeah, okay. let's keep it pretty simple we hit the stretchy bands uh, with a shot of, uh, you know, bicep and a shot of uh, tricep, shoulders, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I would say the stretchy bands. Awesome. Would, yeah. would you – you too, Richie? Uh, same, same thing, same thing. Um, I, I do also um, uh, on, a, on a, I guess, a uh, – not sure if it's the same note, but, I mean – so I carry around, basically, um, I have this necklace that basically has my uh, previous cat. Uh, her name was Mama Lama. She was really special to me. I carry her her ashes in, like, this little tiny vial. Mm. Um, so before I go out, I always, like, say a prayer to myself, and, and I kiss that little thing. Uh, I always feel like I have better matches whenever I have that with me. I did – there was, like, two shows I did uh, in, like, the last year that I happened – I don't know what happened to it. it. I opened up my bag and it wasn't there and I freaked out. And of course it was the worst match. Uh, like I just didn't feel like my brain wasn't there. So I don't know, maybe psychological thing, but it made me feel a lot better after I found it. Mm-hmm. And I continued having matches. I feel like at least I, I didn't break my neck. So that was a plus. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, with the last question, last fun question, if this could be tag team or even separate singles mm-hmm. match, if you could guys could have a match that isn't a wrestler, it could be a celebrity or athlete or anyone, who would it be? Flex? You know what, man? I that that I gotta put some thought into that. I'm it gonna, could be video game thinking. characters, you know, video game characters, even TV show like I kind uh, of I, I kind of have an idea. You know who I'd want to go against? Because I've I've heard this over the last couple of years. I've been compared to John Stamos. I want to I want to beat the crap out of John Stamos. It can only be one, okay? When it comes to like good hair, um, and handsomeness, succulence. <laughs> John Stamos move side. There's Richie Slade here. Well, awesome. if it's gonna be like that, then I'm gonna say Thor because that's what I get. <laughs> I get from day to day. I'll get my most uh, common, you know, lookalike double will be Thor in his short hair phase with beard. So uh, yeah. this is like I highlight. Think, I don't think I'll last very long. Um, but let's just try to ban the hammer and the axe from the match, yeah. and and yeah. uh, maybe like put a rubber top on top of the arena so he can't call for the electric power of the exactly. gods. And I might have a chance of like sneaking up and trying to get a quick yeah. one, two, three roll up or something. I don't know. You know, you know what, Flex? I think if we're smart enough in, in the sense of my opponent, where John Stamos, <laughs> what we can do is we could we can attack him before the match even starts, shave his head. He's out of the game before it even starts. That's like the best that's we can wait. Can we get a celebrity death match for this one? <laughs> 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 
if we can bring back Celebrity Deathmatch, Beef Candy versus John Stamos and Chris Hemsworth as Thor, then yes. I think we're, 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 we're down. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. And then, like, like you said, like uh, Richie said, John Stamos, how would you see that match going? And how would you finish him off? What move uh, would you pick? Stamos isn't a fighter. So, I mean, he might be a good-looking guy, but there can only be one. This is like Highlander, man. You can't, you can't have <laughs> two of us around. So, I'm definitely bringing the Clippers, and he's getting his head shaved. Ooh. Dang, those are fighting words, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, uh, Flex? How would you see you beating, uh, beating Thor? Oh, definitely a, a low blow and a schoolboy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> schoolboy, school hold the tights. Hopefully there, turn the arena no lights way. out, maybe. Yeah. There wouldn't be no other way. That's, that's it. No. And, 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 and I'm going to have to bring Richie into this with the, with the candy cap rules. Uh, because I need a distraction of some sort even to try to get the roll up. So, uh, yeah. The bottom this line is, is going to be a candy cap match. Bottom line is, look, there's this candy cap, two against one. It's not because we're weak. It's because they want the two of us. It's like when you ask for beef candy, what do you get? You get Richie Slade and Flex McCallion. There's no other way around it. You want the succulents and you want the hunk of hunk. And that's what you get. You get the two of us. There's no, no one or the other. It's the two. We come in a complete package. And you've seen you've seen you've seen the uh, the chaos that the left and right Twix have caused to the nation. We don't want to do that to the people. So with that, no. we want to give them fifty percent, fifty percent, one hundred percent beef cans. Yeah. That's how we exactly. look at it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome guys that's awesome oh man um again you know like i said uh you know before we we're doing this uh i've been mean, wanting you guys for a while you know i'm such huge fans what you guys have been doing in hollywood and you guys just like you guys just match together perfectly you know what i mean like you guys just have something like this is something there you know you guys have that you know the it factor what brought you guys together what how did beef candy start so that that's a uh, that's a good that's a good story. I don't know if we've ever put it out there yet of how it happened. Um, so you 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 heard about this thing called COVID. Uh, yes. So so yeah okay. So uh, so that happened uh, originally from my days as Coach Flex. Um, I was going to come back right before the pandemic hit, and I was going to be teamed with um, Jesse Sorensen was the was the plan. Um, mm -hmm. And me and Jesse were going to be a tag team of sorts and uh, we were going to be like wellness fitness trainers is what the idea of it was. Um, and then, and then, yeah, the pandemic hit. So that delayed my return and any more tapings for Hollywood for an additional, I think five or six months at the time. So we came back in August and I went to the tapings, not knowing anything of what I was going to do. And I sat at the tapings for about two hours, not knowing anything of what I was going to do. And um, finally, you know, Damian Sandow, Aaron, uh, we like mm -hmm. to, you know, call him. Um, he, he comes over, he, he's the booker for the show now, and uh, he just says to me, hey, so you're going to be working with, with Richie Slade. Um, and I just was like, okay. And I, I didn't know if he meant match or tag team. And then he goes, you know, I, I looked at your guys' photos and the roster. He said, I think you look good together. And he's like, I'm thinking like Zoolander. If you get the, the vibe, and uh, he's like, I think that would be fun. And he's like, well, I'm going to leave it up to you. And I was like, all right. So I guess he had told Richie that he was working me too. But I think Richie was under the impression that we were, we were working against each other. We were, we were wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, so when I approached Richie, which me and Richie, I think have done shows before, but we never, we never chatted. We never like kind of crossed paths. And uh, I knew of Richie Slade. I've seen his face. I knew him. Uh, but just didn't ever like know him, know him. And uh, it was funny because I went over to him and I, I said, hey, we're going to be working together. And he was like, yeah, I heard that too. And I was like, so they're thinking Zoolander. And he's like, oh, wait, we're like together. And I was like, that's what I'm being told. And then um, so like literally they grabbed us and they were like, hey, guys, we need a promo out of you in like 20 minutes. And we were like, oh, crap. And then I said to Richie, I was like, we need a name. Because the last thing I wanted to do was was become a tag team or some kind of entity without a name because it's so weird when it's just two guys from a singles career or another team put together and it, it feels mixed match. So right away I was like, man, we go in this with a name. We're already cementing that we're, we're, we're together. So I said to Richie, 
a shot in the dark, I said, hey, what do you think of beef candy? And he goes, I like it. And I was like, all right. And, like, I knew that Aaron, he would approve it. I could already tell that he was like, whatever you guys want, whatever is funny. But I was like, Dave Marquez? Hmm. I know how <laughs> Dave knows how I think. And Dave doesn't usually like the hee hee ha ha that I come up with until he sees it live. But he'll, mm. he'll sometimes squash it before it happens because, you know, he's just like, ah, oh, that's not going to sell. That's not going to work. And I'm like, give me a chance. Um, so anyway, we didn't tell him. And the funny part was he was the guy being the interviewer in our first promo. So yeah. his first time hearing the name uh, was when we, at the end of the promo, called it out and said, we are beef candy. And we didn't have anything behind it at the time. We were still working it out. And, and Dave's reaction was, who came up with that name? And it was, it was a total shoot. And as soon as the camera stopped rolling, it was like, no, really, who came up with that name? We're not using that. And um, that's, that's how it started. I mean, really, oh, don't wow. add in anything I left out. But, uh, yeah. No, I think you, I think you uh, yeah. No, that's pretty much it, yeah. man. I, I think, you know, just to add to it, yeah, I, I've seen – I, I've seen products in the the locker room before in Hollywood, and it was just one of those things where I was just going in one the same direction, being kind of stagnant. Uh, and it's one of those blockers that you have in your head where you think you're doing right, or you, you know, you're you're going in the right way, but it kind of takes someone else to kind of push you and say, "No, man, you're just going in circles here. Like you got to try something new, get out of your comfort zone." Um, and that just, you know, again, just to say, like I said earlier, is like this is the most fun I've had, you know, in my entire wrestling career, you know, it's just going out there. And, and what's more exciting about this is that it's anticipating what happens when we get the audience, you know, when we get those fans in the audience and mm -hmm. we say, be Andy and we hear whether it's a boo or a cheer, <laughs> they know, especially those Hollywood fans are going to know, you mm -hmm. know, they're going to know how to react, whether it's a, say it with us or just boo us out of the building whatever the case may be that's what i'm looking forward to and i think i honestly think this is magic man it's like you know it's like beef candy magic it's simple i think it's simple and fun and when you look at oh, throughout the years stone cold rock daniel bryan john cena they always had something that was simple and yet mm -hmm. fun you know the yes 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 you can you can follow along with what what you know the the rock uh the Rock would have the fans in the palm of his hands from any catchphrase that he made huge. Um, so, so my idea was, as we build off this, how can we make this simple and fun, and then still have all this like digestive, you know, uh, material to give people? Mm -hmm. And like beef candy was just, I feel like it's unlimited for where yeah. you can go with it. And even from the beginning of what me and Richie, we were just going to be like handsome men grooming ourselves. And then we totally turned it into like actual candy, yeah. um, we're like you know, hunky men. But like, we love ourselves. Maybe we love each other. We no one else loves us. Who knows? Because the fans aren't there yet, you know. So once the like Richie said, once the fans are there, they'll kind of dictate where we go with mm -hmm. how we say our stuff. And if they want to follow along, or they want to cut us off, or we want to cut them off that's where we'll, we'll, we'll get that opportunity. So mm. fingers crossed that we hopefully get that shot maybe in July or so. It seems like everything is relaunching in July. We haven't gotten yeah. an official word, but um, it looks like the, on the horizon, you know, fans will definitely <clears throat> know the name of Beef Candy. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, like you said, it like it's fun and simple and it's always fun to watch you guys every week. You know, you guys put on a show, especially with you flex when you took the mic away from the notes and you do the whole introduction. Yeah. When it comes to all that stuff, like with that and also like bringing out the candy, like who's coming up with the stuff? Like, is it both of you guys or one of you? Like who's coming up with the ideas? It's, yeah, it's definitely both of us chiming in. Um, a lot of the crazy stuff, I got to say, it's flex. Flex is the crazy guy. Oh. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take it all right yeah i mean yeah now let me say this richie richie is such a ring this is me putting richie over but richie's such a ring general man when i watched his work especially when i was out there on the sidelines managing next to richie um his his psychology and i say this to 
anybody I get the chance to talk to about Richie. He, before this gimmick, I felt like you could watch his match and see a really good match, but you're like, you're kind of frustrated watching Richie's work because you're like, why is no one using this guy with mm-hmm. something more than just having him as a, a good worker? And now with this, I feel like you really get to see Richie's solid ring work because there's a character attached to it. And yeah. this is something I told Dickie Mayer back in the day, too, when he was in Pack 3. Dickie was really good, and he was, he was really building a, a, a fan base with the whole Pack 3 fallout. Um, but he never grabbed a character. And I told him, man, like the guys you love, whether it was, you know, William Regal or um, Daniel Bryan or, you know, any of the, the Japanese legends, it's like they always had at one point in their career – some kind of weird character vibe that they did. Even Regal, yeah. I mean, he was part of the Kiss My Ass Club. He did all kinds of stuff. You need to be able to be versatile when it comes to showing a little um, extra base of who you are, and that way the people can feel like they know you. They can feel yeah. like they feel for you, and they can feel like like what you have coming to you, you either deserve or you don't deserve. I feel like if you can't evolve into something that the people can become close with, then it's just like, well, yeah, I want to see this guy hit that move. And that's right. it. You yeah. know, so I, I've seen Richie get his his due with this whole um, this gimmick. And, and that part makes me happy, you know, seeing him mm-hmm. get that recognition for the Thanks. entire package. Yeah, yeah I, I, this is an opportunity for the both of us. You know, I think, unfortunately, which this is something that you get anywhere you go. And I've said it before. And I'll say it again. Uh, it, real life, you know, you're it's all about who you know. Uh, it's mm-hmm. all about who your friends are and it's not so much about what you know and how good you are at it um, wrestling is very much you know just like any other job you got a friend who works higher up boom you got an opportunity you got it you know mm-hmm. so it's harder for guys that actually are out there busting their asses that really want to sh- you know show them what, mm-hmm. what you know what they have. Um, I'm just I'm just blessed that you know Dave Marquez um, Aaron uh, these guys uh, went out of their way to give me and flex an opportunity and like at this point man we're just scratching and clawing we're like give us whatever you got you know throw it at us we got it um and the work is in itself you know we're we're um you know we're training we're going out there working we're trying to work on ourselves make ourselves better um you know, I mean, I, I even listen, you know, I, I look into the chats, I see what people do on the streams as far as like what they say on the feedbacks. And I, I say like, I, it's funny, man, because wrestling is one of those things where fans guys lay the poor wrestler uh and, and every now and then i'm like hey wait a minute this guy's like oh Richie slate is so untalented and then i'm like what like how dare he does he does this guy even know what i'm capable of but mm-hmm. i have to sit back and say wait a minute wait a minute me and flex are doing our job if you hate us bingo that's exactly yeah. what we're trying the trying to get out of you yeah yeah, exactly. So like we're we're just trying to prove ourselves and we are hungry. Uh, um, and this is this is just the beginning. Uh, I, 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 I always, uh, especially lately, you know, both me and Flex have been going around spraying people on the back with the BC, uh, you know, just letting everybody know, man, B candy is spreading worldwide. It's like, you know, it's like having a it's like having a. a, a you know, some kind of disease that you just can't get rid of. You thought you got rid of it and it just came back. It's it's kind of like that, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? You know, like now that now that COVID is lightening up, we, there needs to be a new pandemic of sorts. And uh, <laughs> I feel like the branding of the BC is to let you yeah. know that it's a new era. And yeah. uh, it might not be the, the, the whole, the, the new world order, but it's a, it's a new worldwide web order. Oh, yeah. And that's why we're, we're letting everyone see it online right now. Just- and just so you know, we're we're looking to expand. I mean, there's a there, this is this is just the beginning between me and Flex right now. We got this. We got we're we're brainstorming, we're coming up with ideas, ways to take over, yeah. and we're gonna there's reach still, worldwide one way or another. There's definitely some new molds being made at the candy shop. That's all I'm <laughs> cool. saying. So don't don't think that 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 beef candy is limited to two people. There can fit oh. more in one pack of beef. Exactly. Candy. Yeah. And it's crazy because, like, you know, 
I've been familiar with you guys' work. I especially with Flex with, you know, Pack 3 seeing you guys, you know, you guys winning tag team titles. And then same thing with you, Richie. Like, I remember watching you live uh, wrestling at EWF, mm. and uh, it was against uh, TJP. So I remember uh, I was there for that match, and it was just a great match. I even told Rich, I'm like, somebody's, you know, we got we to gotta push Richie Slate. Yeah. Because exactly. that match was awesome. <laughs> and seeing you, Flex, too. So I'm just so happy for you guys that you guys are finally getting – you know, you guys are spotlight in Hollywood every week, killing it. So happy for you guys. And uh, and also, you know, I remember watching, the, um, it was kind of like a vignette for you guys. It was like the montage where you guys, yeah. were, yeah. you guys were in Long Beach. The beach you guys were- <laughs> I don't think I ever went back there after that, man. That beach was a dump. You know what? Uh, actually, I stepped on a needle. So, uh, yeah, I uh, my, my foot turned purple. I don't know if it was the great two ball that I ate. From Candyland, yeah. or if it was, uh, I think it might be infected. I haven't gotten it fixed yet. So, well, I mean, you remember the bum that was sleeping around like nearby. I'm sure that probably belonged to him. But like I said, man, I like to surround myself with successful people, people that want to be, you know, that want to rise to the top. And when I went to that beach, I just saw a bunch of losers. I was turned off instantly. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, it was so much fun. I remember the Andy too, where you guys always go to the water. You're like, where are we at? Like, oh, Long Beach, and you guys just yeah. got, <laughs> you guys just left. <laughs> Yeah. You see, like, Flex Flex drove me there. I fell asleep in the car. I had no idea where we were going. Yeah, he was dreaming yeah. of sugar plums and, and fairy tales. <laughs> yeah. um, he, he, I, 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 I wanted to save on gas, so that's why I stopped in Long Beach. Uh, I was being cheap. But, you know, good thing Richie stopped me from jumping in the water. I would have, you know, yeah. probably got some kind of skin disease. So, yeah, good thing. <laughs> Awesome. And then, Nick, you know, what advice can you give to a team that wants the wrestlers that want to be a team? Like, what is the goal to have success? Do it. Yeah, uh, try, try to look good uh, and maybe maybe look something like a Zoolander combo. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, I, I would say I would say, man, tag teams are huge in wrestling. Um, there, we went through a period, I think, when we were all growing up that tag team wrestling was, was everything. It was his own division. It was massive. And then there was a part, maybe during the Ruthless Aggression Era, that they didn't yeah. put any kind of spotlight on tag team wrestling. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a heartbreaker. There was a, r- a lot of good teams at that time that, that had to come and go because they weren't putting enough into the division. But I feel like over the past four or five years, every division is starting to get its, its equal shine the tag team division and all the major companies, the women's division, the cruiserweight division, even these divisions have come back from obscurity and yeah. with the tag team division being so open and huge in AEW and WWE in championship wrestling from Hollywood in ring of honor in new Japan. I feel like it's a great time to really look around the locker room or, or start training with somebody that you know that you can mesh with, and become compatible. It might not be instantly, and it might not it might not be in every single way. But if you can look at someone and maybe start finishing their sentences, maybe feel the same way they do, look at your physiques, look at your gear, see if any of it matches up, that might be your best opportunity to say, hey, what do you got going on in your career right now? What's your goals? And if you're both like, hey, I want to get somewhere. I'm hungry. That's the time to be like, hey, maybe we should do this together. And, and try to cut a promo together. See if see if there's chemistry. And if that chemistry is there, act on it. And, mm-hmm. and, and go far with it, man. Because here's the thing, and I said this to Pac-3, honest to God. I said, look, it's not about what you're going to do in your career. It's about what everyone's going to do in the group, in their career. Once you get a foot in the door, if it's the act that sells, if it's the act that the people are watching, they want the whole act. They're not just looking for one of you guys. So certain people in Pack 3 were kind of centered on their own gimmick more than the team's yeah. gimmick. And I felt like that's why we didn't go further than what we did. And the idea is once you get your foot in the door with the act you are literally selling to the company, that's what will give you the opportunity to do anything else. You need to get in first. If you want mm-hmm. that singles career, if you want a main event WrestleMania, if you want a world title, get in first. Because maybe you being that singles great isn't what they're looking for. But maybe you coming in with a bunch of brothers and someone that you really tangle t- together with, maybe that's the part that they'll go, wow, these guys are awesome. I'll take them. 
Once that point's in, they can use you however. Just mm-hmm. get in. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and also, you know, when it comes to, like, doing promos and stuff, is there anything, like, any film you guys watch of other wrestlers to get inspiration on what you guys are doing? Or any advice you guys have? Just have energy. When you talk, have energy. When you're on the microphone, make yourself be heard. Uh, mm-hmm. Flex is, I mean, Flex is skilled when it comes to the microphone. I mean, I'm I just even working with this guy right now. I'm learning a lot, but you know, it's it's having that energy and and having uh, believing what you're saying, having some belief behind it. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, nothing's worse than watching a guy cut a promo as he, as he's saying what he's saying. He's looking around, his eyes are shifting around, like he's doubting himself. It's, I see that all the time too. And it's like, come on, man. It, like, if you're going to say something, believe it, believe in what she's going to say. Um, 100% again. Confident. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. it is. It's the confidence fact. If you're not confident in the character you are or the, where you're going in that direction of the, the gimmick or feud or wherever, that's your problem. It doesn't matter yeah. if they said, Hey, tonight you're wearing a tutu and you're putting a teacup on your head. You better put the, t- the, the teacup on your head. You put the tutu on and look at yourself in the mirror and say, Okay, this is what I'm doing. And imagine yeah. you doing anything else with those things on you. You can't go into a promo and be dead to life because everyone else is going to read that. And if it's not high energy and if it's not yeah. something that people want to watch, they'll tune out. Mm-hmm. Enough said. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, absolutely. Totally agree. You know, and I think every promo you guys do is always high energy and it's always fun and entertaining, um, especially like the, the beef, uh, beef or treat. The Halloween yeah. one, where you guys just throw candies like that was awesome. Like I remember laughing that. Uh, how was that like filming that? It, it was fun. Um, it was it was kind of a last minute thing too because they had someone else pegged for it and they didn't come through. Um, so Aaron threw us the bone and they were like, "Hey, why don't we have Beef Candy do it?" And um, some of those people that we did the Beef Retreat with, I wasn't familiar with their work and we were just kind of thrown. You know, we. Just, it was thrown together and some mm-hmm. of those guys are working for AEW now they're they're in yeah. NXT and it's cool to know that like all those guys were down for it you know and we mm-hmm. and we just all threw it together at one time and uh, yeah it was really fun man I, I i love the holiday stuff me and richie got to do a nice little christmas one on primetime mm-hmm. live too uh um, yeah. hopefully we'll get to touch on more holidays it, it kind of goes oh, yeah. back to my nightmare Definitely for christmas not- you know favorite movie so yeah <laughs> I say definitely at the end of it, man. We're gonna keep doing that. That's gonna have to be now holiday tradition. Beef candy. Oh, absolutely, you know? absolutely. <laughs> and also, you know, you know, you you won the Hollywood Heritage Champion. You beat Jordan Clearwater, especially with the 500th episode. What was that feeling like winning a title? Also, you winning a kind of, winning as a team. What was that moment like for you guys? I, I for me, it was it was awesome. It was it was like all the work that I put, you know, a lot of people, they look at certain things in a different perspective. You know, of course we all have opinions, uh, people that are in the business, uh, they could look at it, you know, a championship as in, it's just, Oh, it's just, a, you know, this is a title and, or, or they, they refer it, you know, like it's a belt, like as if it's holding up their pants or something. To me, it's a lot more than that. When, uh, you know, for something like this is prestigious, you know, and, and to know that the names that actually, held to the you know held on to this championship prior to me is what made this championship as prestigious as it is and to think that i'm i you know basically between me and flex beef candy has made their name put their name right in between that so i'm i'm happy man i i can't like i said that's a it was it's i'm still kind of like i i'll, I'll think back and i'm thinking man that's magic right there. Was I dreaming? You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it was. It was a cool moment when that when that ended up going down, and uh, I, I felt like I felt like it was it was one of those things. Like like Richie said, it's not about just having a belt or a prop. It says that the company has confidence in you, and yeah. it says that the mm-hmm. company is willing to showcase you as one of their flyer men. You know, your face yeah. on the flyer, your face on the marquee. You're the one of the, I don't want to say top build guys, but at that time, they are so confident that you are holding what their, their moniker is. And it's, it's their top championship. And uh, I just, yeah, it was, it was a really big thing. And it was cool to, to, to be a part of. 
and um, everything that's gone down, and, and even with Jordan straight stealing it from us, uh, you know, <laughs> no hard feelings. You know, we, we did take his tooth, which, we, we, you know, that was that was fun. You know what I mean? Uh, I couldn't cash it in for anything. It wasn't worth anything. Yeah. The tooth fairy actually filled me. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so it was good fun, you know. still I still don't like it. Like it, it was a rotten tooth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jordan, you know, how weird is that? Jordan, you got – Jordan uh, Clearwater, and you got Jordan Cruz. You got two Jordans. And, uh, Jordan C, too. Jordan yeah. C. So you see the Jordan C, and then a Jordan C. B. It sounds like a conspiracy, honestly. Weird. <laughs> I, feel like I, I feel like somebody doesn't like us, you know? It's, like, kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, now, speaking of, as of now, what are you guys' goals in Hollywood? Who, what team you guys want to face? What titles you guys want to win? All What's the goal of now for Beef Candy? All, all of them. them. Why is there a yep. limit? They're all of them. Why can't we – Take it all. At this point, I want to be like Ultimo Dragon, draped in yeah. gold. <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, I, I remember seeing that, and I see a lot of guys in the Indies. They're, they're they're holding these championships up, and they're like, "Hey, yeah, look at me!" Hey, no, man, no, I'm not. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying any of these guys holding up any of these championships. But if you saw Beef Candy holding up the championship, all these beautiful, luxurious, succulent titles, I guarantee <laughs> you would react. Whether you say, the, I hate these guys or I love these guys. But if I see, it, you know, another indie guy holding up 10 championships, whether right now I'll probably get a crap ton of hate for this, I'm just going to vomit because I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome, man. Again, this has been so much fun talking to you guys. It's been entertaining. Uh, one more question real quick. Um, if you can give any person listening right now any advice that wants to be a wrestler, what advice would you give them? You want to go first, Flex? Yeah, I, I would say, I would say, uh, make sure your heart's in it. Uh, it. It's an aggressive business. It's, it's a political business. It's, uh, you, you, you get, you get hurt, you know, even if you, you're really trained, um, highly skilled, it, you still take a beating. I know from this past tapings, I hadn't been in the ring for about three years um and uh when i got back in it felt great next morning felt like i got hit by a truck so just understand that no matter how big you are how swole you are you know how mentally um stable and and you know um skilled you are it ha it takes everything to be yeah. a pro wrestler and you could think to yourself man that's crazy blah 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 you know i watch guys do it i think i can do it too literally know that you want this because I wanted it since I was a kid and, and I was, I've been in and out of the business since 2009 and you, you'll go through your characters and you'll go through, you know, your time off and you come back. It shows that heart, that drive that you really want it. And that's what this business really needs. I'll be, I'll, I might get some hate for this, but we don't need dudes that are six foot six and you just pick them up off the street because they look good or they look big yeah. and you mm -hmm. teach them wrestling because their heart isn't into it. They didn't grow up with it. They could care less. They're just collecting a paycheck. The difference is you're entertained by guys that are doing this because it's what they love. And the group of guys you're looking at right now that are going to be on your TV screen is the guys that watch the Attitude Era, the guys that watch the end of the 80s era. And they're emulating essentially what they loved about pro wrestling. So if they're able to do it good, we can get another round of the attitude error. Mm -hmm. But if you take a lot of just big hunk dudes that don't know the sport and aren't athletic, you're not going to be able to reciprocate what we looked at back in the late 90s. Yeah, 100. Well said. Yeah, I would say just to add to that is for anybody coming in, uh, just know, again, it's this is a business about just like any job. It's about who you know not what to know and uh but it's always good though if you if you have that passion in your heart just because you go in there and you think you don't have what it takes because you don't know the right people don't let that be the one thing to end it keep pushing keep going for it because someone is going to notice your hard work someone's uh, you know someone's always watching and they should recognize it so never give up um and don't eliminate yourself because you're not the biggest guy in there um, let that fuel you, if anything, let that be the reason that you keep going and pushing. I remember when I first, the first six months of me training at Jesse Hernandez, uh, school of hard knocks, I, uh, 
I ended up getting told by this one guy, which was funny because I actually went to the show and I saw him and I thought, my gosh, you know, if this guy is like my size, uh, if he's doing it, I can do it. So it kind of inspired me, you know, I won't say any names because later on what he told, uh, told me this after I was training uh, about, you know, five or six months in, he tells me, well, if you think you're going to go in you know, and you're going to end up winning championships and you're going to get the push that you want. Just know you're not. You're always going to end up losing and you're probably never going to get used. Um, and, you know, just, you know, basically count your blessings. If you're even if you get booked at a show, you're probably not mm -hmm. doing. It. And at first it was kind of like, what? Like, that sounds like somebody that's really soured up themselves mm -hmm. and they couldn't do it. And they have the charisma. And that's exactly what it was. Because yeah. after a year. I ended up winning a championship at some place uh, and that wasn't the first one. I just kept going. And then I had, uh, you know, I had these great opportunities. I went against guys like Chavo Guerrero and throw some names up there, Matt Hardy, you know, people mm -hmm. that I grew up watching. Again, people sit at home and they're watching this on television and they're saying, God, when I grow up, I want to, I want to be just like this guy or, you know, like I'm such a wrestling fan. Like I never imagined in my entire life that I would have a match against Chavo Guerrero. And yet I ended up doing that. And it was one of those things I always got to keep going back to this one kid being stupid because of his own failures. He almost cost me that. If I had believed in it, I would have just hung it up right then and there and says, why am I, why am I going to go? Why am I going to try? But I kept pushing. Why? Because he doubted me. Why? Because I thought I was better than him. Uh, and that's, I mean, if you're going to be a wrestler, you, you have to have some sort of ego there to believe that you're capable of making it. If there's ever a doubt, push that aside. Just keep pushing forward. That's all I could say. Because if if I was able to do it and I got my dream matches, uh, it, I could throw in more names out there. Uh, Chris Masters. I was on 205 Live. I wrestled, you know, alongside Fidel mm -hmm. Bravo against Tazawa and uh, uh, Brian Kendrick. Again, he, Brian Kendrick, another guy that I've respected and I've mm -hmm. always loved watching. Uh, and and here I am sharing WWE ring with this guy. Phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Yeah, Amazing. Right, I can't get over the fact that I can't say about it I'm in cloud nine, man. I'm just, I'm having fun. Awesome, man. Great advice. And, you know, he has a definition, man, of hard work and determination and anything is possible, man. So again, man, honor to have you guys, man. It was so much thank fun. You. I've been wanting you guys for a while. So thank you so much for taking the time uh, to do this with us. And uh, you guys have a message for the fans out there or watching this? Um, yeah, you know, if you've, uh, if you've seen us at all, I think you've seen we've grown over this past year, and it's only going to continue. And uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're smart, you're going to get on the bandwagon now because it's going to go so fast that you won't be able to catch up to us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and like I said, we're expanding. And uh, it won't be anyone watching at home that we're going to bring to the candy shop, but we are molding our own. And when we reveal them, you're going to love the taste of it. And it's not going to oh. be the taste of vanilla. It's going to be the new taste on the block. And you're <laughs> going to have to swallow it whether you like it or not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome, guys. Awesome. And then uh, where can the fans uh, where can they, uh, um, reach you guys on social media? What do you, where can they, where can they find you guys? Uh, you, you can follow me on, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much on everything on Twitter. Uh, all you gotta do is just search up on there. I don't think there's that many Richie Slades going around. Uh, just search Richie Slade and you'll find me in there, whichever you're looking for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and yeah, yeah. Flex. Yeah. Best one's going to be Instagram at Flex McCallion. Uh, I, Twitter and me are not, we're, we're not together right now. So you won't find <laughs> me there. Uh, but, and Facebook, I try to keep more for family and friends. I mean, I did let fans in before, but I think it's better to just, for me to keep it to one. So probably, probably Instagram at Flex McCallion. You could always write me a letter too, but the address is undisclosed. So just tell a carrier pigeon to go find Flex. <laughs> and those, those letters always end up in, in Candyland. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. You can always write us in Candyland, but I, I think that might be a little difficult to get a, uh, you know, a pigeon on board with that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome, guys. Thank you so much. And there you go. You guys can watch these guys kill it on Championship Wrestling Hollywood, on KDOC, and Fight TV. 
again, guys, honor to have you guys on. It was thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And hey, you know what? I think with all this time we've talked, I want to hear you guys give it one oh. more go. Oh, yes. uh, we totally right. failed. We failed. <laughs> No, you guys well, you great. <laughs> this is your second chance to redeem yourself. So let's see. Can you nail it? Yeah, you guys <clears throat> coordinate with each other. Come on. All right. I'll start. All right. Beef candy. No. That was uh that How was did you guys go was, from low. his voice is low with yeah. candy? What did you guys go from like you guys were initially you guys got three out of ten, you guys went down to two out of ten. What, oh, what come the hell on. happened? Come on, man. Uh, okay, look, 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 look. You gotta put well, some tell us how to do it right. Can you show us how you, you guys do it? Then that. So let's 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 send it off in a proper fashion. All right, all right. <laughs> Candy. That's it. <laughs> <And> there you <laughs> go. <laughs> awesome, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you guys for watching and listening to Championship Online Podcast. We'll see you guys next time here. See y'all late.